I was doing this like super low budget horror film. And like one of the other crew members or cast members came up to me when we were sort of having some downtime between shots. And he was like, so what is it like to work in your uncle's shadow? And I was like, what? <laughs> work in my uncle's shadow, you know what I mean? But then I got it because that was who he was. New Mexico-based actor Christine Hansen has a unique relationship to horror cinema. Her uncle, Gunnar Hansen, is an icon of the genre. And while you may not recognize his stern gaze here, you most likely will hear. <laughs> I think it was something he was very proud of, um, and uh, and at times possibly a little defensive about, you know, being the the first. At six foot four, Hansen's dominating presence was perfect for the masked maniac Leatherface in the 1974 Toby Hooper film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But behind the infamous facade was the heart of a poet, a writer, and an adventurer. Yeah, he was a graduate student in English and Scandinavian studies. And I don't know that he had any designs at all on, you know, becoming a film actor. The film shot in Austin, Texas in the summer of 1973. Hansen, then just 26 years old and a graduate student at UT Austin, was looking for a summertime job and was referred to the casting director by a friend. What initially started as a two-week shoot schedule ballooned into a four-week odyssey for the filmmakers, working seven days a week in the humid 100-degree temperatures of Middle Texas. It was a journey that would change Hansen's life forever. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre premiered in 1974, shocking the world with its cinema verite style of brutality. And while critics panned the film due to its violence, over the years it became recognized as one of the most influential works in the genre. And Hansen's performance as a faceless killer would pave the way for other boogeymen in the slasher genre. He probably was looking to have more of a literary career, a career as a writer. Born in Reykjavik, Iceland, Hansen was as much a documentarian, adventurer, and a poet as he was an icon of the horror genre a paradox in many ways to the tough guy persona often adopted by actors who portray on-screen villains. He, is, he was a sensitive soul. He was a gentle soul. He, um, as he grew older, he kind of became a little bit of a benign curmudgeon. After graduate school, he moved back to Maine to develop a career as a writer. As Hansen's first home in America when his mother and brother moved from Iceland when he was just five, he held a deep connection to the Northeast a subject for many of his books and films. He didn't live a complicated life, but he lived a good life. He loved to be on the water. Hansen worked for many years as a writer for magazines, pinning poetry and books, and learning the hard way about development hell with more than a few screenplays. Yet through all his various endeavors, his life-changing experience on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre couldn't escape him. There's this whole history of an iconic film and the making of it that has not really been told, right? And so like his being able to actually call these memories and put them together, you know, it's like, it's like here is a history that I've been living with that, I, that please let me give it some air. His 2013 memoir, Chainsaw Confidential, took fans back to the dusty, sweat-soaked locations of Austin, Texas, bringing them inside the trials and tribulations of working on an ultra-low-budget feature that would eventually become one of the most notorious films ever made and propel Hansen into the stratosphere of cult heroes. Um, I think that he um, owes uh, a debt of gratitude to that opportunity, and I think he never stopped being grateful for it. And going to all those conventions, like even if he was tired of traveling, you know, one after the other and flights and talking to people, and I don't think that gratitude ever waned. In a twist of irony, a movie about the making of the horror movie is finally underway, based on Hansen's memoir. However, the actor and writer will never see it. He passed away in 2015 after a battle with pancreatic cancer, 
just two years after his book was published. And after years of careful development, Hansen's partner, Betty Tower, agreed to an option with the newly formed Ambitious Entertainment. And according to Deadline.com, the film will be a dark comedy, bringing all the fun, horror, and craziness from the making of the original film. I think he feels, because of all the effort he puts into the work that he does, that he puts into his craft and writing, um, he feels protective of it, and I think he would still feel protective of it, but I think he would be so gratified that it generated that level of interest. And I think he would, my sense is that he'd be really excited about it. It's a fitting coda to the life of a storyteller, one that was full of unexpected journeys, deep familial connections, and a legacy that still inspires filmmakers 40 years after it hit the silver screen.